Hello Crunchy Mamas! Today we have Jennifer from ben Beyond Bending Yoga. That she's going to talk to us about her practice, her yoga practice, her studio, her Ayurveda therapy, and all the other yoga practices that she has, restorative yoga. She has, um, let me bring her in here. She has the most amazing studio and she is now in her virtual classes. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, Wanda, how are you? Good, I am so excited for this live with you today because I love yoga and I love Ayurveda and I love um, anything related to meditation. I meditate every day. So everything that you Wonderful. do, I am passionate about as well. Good. And how fun that we both have jobs that we get to share and bring these wonderful practices and their little offshoots it's to women who need them most. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, right? I love it too. I'm so happy that you're here and sharing your understanding and passion for yoga and everything that we love and it's so important for our health, mind, body and soul. Mm -hmm. So um, wonderful. Thank you for having me, Wanda. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Share mm -hmm. with us your story, how you started in the yoga world and everything. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I'm first and foremost mm -hmm. um, a physical educator, and that's how I started, was in the world of physical education. A yogi before that, healing okay. from knee surgeries I had when I was a teenager. Oh my and goodness. I was a big athlete, did a lot of outdoor pursuits. And it was really hard to keep going with competitive um, sports. So I really I found yoga as a way to feel that need for flow state and movement and enjoyment of my body while I was healing. And then built upon that while I was teaching in public schools and working with athletes there and helping them realize how yoga could really be a positive part of their performance. And then that mental side of it, just learning to control the mind monkey, right, negative right. talk through so, positive yeah, bodies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that rolled quickly into having kids and realizing the layer of yoga when you're expecting a child and going through all of that transformation of pregnancy and a labor and birth and then being a parent. So it's only had this strong layer effect from the time I was a late teen all the way to now is my kids are now tweens. And that, and then those of you who are watching who can follow this, tweens, that's a whole new animal to deal with having children who are learning about their own emotions. Right. So staying the level presence in home. Mm -hmm. What was that? You practice with your kids at home? We do. When we had a brick and mortar studio, they would come into some classes with me because we've always homeschooled, so they were able to come in with me. Um, but now... They're, since they're tweens, they don't want to roll out their mat with me so much now, but we do those non-mat-based practices. So those first two limbs of yoga, the yamas and niyamas, those internal observances, how you re re uh, relate to yourself mm -hmm. and how you relate to the exterior world. And those take us, um, those take us very far uh, um, away from what a mat-based American asana practice might look like, but it's all yoga and it's all essential to learning um, how to be the best version of you and feel good in your own skin. It's so important mm -hmm. for kids to learn yoga at a young age. And I think it's mm -hmm. amazing that you do that because it just helps them understand so much about their bodies and about mm -hmm. their thoughts as well, how they, yeah. their thought yeah. process. That's awesome. So, Tell me more. I'm sorry for the interruption. I just really wanted yeah. to. Oh, that's fine. Kids in the practice. No, so um, I, I've always, you know, long time, more, more of my life than not been a yoga practitioner, but learning to teach yoga is its own practice. And I enjoyed that. And it was a better fit for me as we were having kids and wanting to have more of a home based life with them. But I still very much wanted a career. Right. And yoga was a wonderful fit. So I started training as my first was born. And um, thought I'd just take one, right? I'll just take one. I, you know, I already have a master's in phys ed. I can do this. And I was hooked. And now I have a 500-hour RYT. And, um, yoga really, really hooks you because it's just, mm -hmm. it makes you feel so good and mm -hmm. so much aligned with your inner self mm -hmm. that it's, it's just, you mm -hmm. can't stop. 
It's impossible yeah. to stop. Yeah, and layering in that Ayurveda. So the, the Ayurveda education I have comes through a yoga lens. Mm -hmm. And maybe someday it'll be just an Ayurveda school. But for now, it's from a, through a yoga lens. And it's very practical because it comes from the point that we already understand with yoga. And it says, well, here's this off the mat practice to come alongside those other limbs of yoga mm -hmm. and help you make good decisions to align yourself in your day. Just like we're doing when we're on the mat and we're trying to feel low key in our mind or more settled in our mind and feel good in our body, feel strong um, yet resilient in our body. Mm -hmm. I feel like yoga is not a practice. It's not like a workout. You don't go to you know the mm -hmm. studio and you practice and you mm -hmm. leave and you forget about it. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it. it goes inside your body. It goes inside your mind and you practice yoga your breathing exercises, mm -hmm. the Ayurveda concept mm -hmm. on a daily basis, it becomes part mm -hmm. of your life. Yeah. Correct? And yes. And I think one of the things that you're highlighting on, which you're so nice because you're reminding me what I really wanted to share. Um, a lot of things, there's so much to share, but right. one of them is that yoga philosophy principle um, of the layers of our being, right? So our koshas, the layers of our being. So kosha is the fancy yoga word to just say, there are many parts to us. We're a physical body and yoga helps us feel good in our physical body. Right. But then let's take one step in and talk about our energy, you know, our felt sense when we have those sensations that lift us up or bring us down or like the one I had before I pushed request and I was nervous, you know, like it's all energy. Right, right. Um, and then we have our mental body, what's going on in our mind. We have our wisdom body where our intuition lives. And then we have our bliss body. And so taking the idea of the koshas, the layers of you, and bringing in a practice of yoga helps us understand where an imbalance might be or where there needs to be growth or where there's abundance and we're really thriving in an area. Um, I so just love this, Jennifer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you are amazing. Like, you're, you're talking to everyone right now, but it feels like you're talking to me. And I'm like, hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> and so this is one of the things that's been really beneficial to go online because I'm not a digital online person. We always talked about it, but then you have a pandemic and you're like, ready or not, here we go. And my husband does so much of it. He does the back end and makes it possible. Um, but it's allowed me to teach people who couldn't show up to the brick and mortar because the schedule never worked out. Right. They didn't have the time. They didn't have childcare. And I really enjoy being able to be personal um, in, a, in an online setting and meet more people, especially the moms. And I have a lot of moms who are able to come now and take classes with me from their home. And sure, I'd love to have them in my space. But they're bringing their husbands who may not go to yoga. And the husbands are starting to do yoga. Um, sometimes they join the virtual Zoom ones. Mm -hmm. And some people are bringing their kids and they're getting their kids in there and showing them what yoga is. And it's always just me. One take. I study hard. I, I don't have notes in front of me. Mm -hmm. So the online studio has really allowed um, me to be personal, continue to be personal with people, but bring it into their home. So it's definitely more accessible. It's more affordable because it's an online format. So there's many positives to hopping online and then sharing just the personal nature. That is beautiful because now it's it's funny because the world, we can't physically be with a lot of people, but we yeah. can do so much more virtually, like mm -hmm. our yoga practice. We can be more inclusive with our family, mm -hmm. with what we mm -hmm. do. Like I, you know, like convincing a tween or a teenager sometimes <laughs> to go to a yoga studio with you, mm -hmm. that's hard. But if he's right next to you or your child is right next to you, let's mm -hmm. do it together. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, go in front of a screen and see Jennifer and watch her breathing exercises. And it's just, yeah. it becomes a family event as well. I love and that. Sometimes they're just in the other room listening and they're not quite ready, but they're still gaining something from it. Right. And they're seeing, it's more tangible to see mom or see dad or whoever it is, take a step out of the room and say, I'm doing this for me now. Right. Going to the gym is one thing, but it's just a little bit more real to see making the space in the home. And there, it's, it's one beautiful thing we can take out of having to be in home more. And they don't have to worry about their friends seeing them at the gym with their mom in the yoga class. 
Yeah. They don't have mm -hmm. to worry about anything. No one knows what they're doing at home. You know, <laughs> if they're doing yoga, if they're doing meditation, yeah. breathing. My yeah. son is a teenager. He's 16 and he started doing meditation. And I oh. love that. He did yoga yeah. as a child, but then he didn't uh -huh. want to do it anymore. And then he started doing meditation now. So he's going back to his roots. <laughs> I love that. That is so amazing. So tell me about the Ayurveda. And then mm -hmm. we're, we'll go to your other like therapeutic, um, you have therapeutic, sure. restorative, mm -hmm. and all your practices. And then we, then mm -hmm. don't, don't sign off people because we're going to do the minute mind and body. Practice yes, with which everybody needs in any day at 3.30, but much less in December. <laughs> and we do a holiday season. So it'll be, yeah, please stay. So the Ayurveda, the lifestyle coaching program that I do, it, like I said, it's through a yoga lens. So it allows us to layer in some daily practices that will align us for a positive day, for our goals, for our intentions. So we learn about the basics of our mind-body constitution. What makes you uniquely you, how you've been from birth, right? We all kind of, you can look back at that childhood friend and see them older and be like, oh, They've always been this way, right? And you kind of get a sense for them. Right. And then there are certain life experiences that bring us into situations like I'm pretty sure in March and in April, we all had a little more of that vata, that spacious, maybe scattered or anxious, just hard to ground down because there was so much changing. So the Ayurvedic Lifestyle Program allows us to learn more about what makes you you why we might be feeling the way we are, and then respond through daily practices, sometimes even food, if we're into bringing in food, but it doesn't have to be a food thing. It can just be how are we scheduling our days and how are we living our lives to take um, out some stresses that we know we might lean towards and find more homeostasis and alignment that work with our intentions. Right. So it helps you be a better version of yourself with yourself. some simple daily changes and take away that that version of yourself that you don't want to see and you mm -hmm. don't want to remember that is there because it really does it mm -hmm. comes out when we're frustrated or stressed mm -hmm. it, you know parts of us that we don't mm -hmm. even like to remember mm -hmm. so i love that that is amazing. yeah so it's it's I really life coaching that you do yes and it's really just taking the first little bits of this whole big practice of ayurveda mm -hmm. and it's taking those first bits and saying Let's take a step forward into this world and give it a try and interact with it. And if it's something that really works well for you, step up to find an Ayurvedic practitioner, which here in Western North Carolina, we, we really have a lot of those, especially around the Asheville area. So this is just the first step into it, especially if you're a yogi and you're like, I'm a little more curious about more of this off the mat lifestyle stuff and the science of Ayurveda. It's a great place to start. I love the area. Mm -hmm. I, I love Ayurveda. I grew up with Ayurveda. My dad is from India, mm -hmm. so I love it. And I think it's so important for everybody to at least be curious to learn a little yeah. bit more about Ayurveda because it really makes a difference in your daily yeah. life. And what about the restorative yoga that you do? Mm -hmm. So being a studio owner here in Western North Carolina, especially in the mountains, you ha I have to become more of a generalist and the 500 hour program helped me do that. Mm -hmm. And so restorative yoga, as I took that first training, you realize how valuable it is to slow down, to prop your practice, to understand your movement, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and how we can use movement as a therapy to help us feel better. So the restorative movements, not only the yin yoga, where we purposely layer in a little bit of tension, but the restorative yoga, where we try to take out tension and learn to relax. Both of those two sides of it are important to bring in. Right. And thankfully, I had met Jen Coffin over in Knoxville, and mm -hmm. she taught me all about rope ball yoga. And over here, I've got my nice rope ball in the home now, so the whole family can play on that. that. But bringing in leverage... <laughs> Yeah, bringing in leverage into your practice to help you, just like Ayurveda can help you learn how to be a better version of you right. through daily routines. The rope wall, the addition of tension, or the release of tension helps us also from that mat-based side learn how to be a better version of ourselves in that physical, in the physical body. Right. Oh, that is beautiful. So, one of the things that I wanted to share, if you don't know mm -hmm. yet, that. Jennifer's classes are in the giving box, in our giving box this yes. month. So if you haven't signed up for this box, sign up if you ha and, and you'll get 
free classes mm -hmm. that you can take virtually from um, from yoga from Jennifer's studio. And if you don't get the giving box, make sure to go to her page, her website, and check mm -hmm. out her classes because they're amazing. And she shares a lot of classes mm -hmm. on her IGTV, on her Instagram mm -hmm. page. There's a lot of content there that is mm -hmm. invaluable i would i love your page i'm always following your page i love everything that all the tips and everything that you teach us there thank so you Ab. tell us about this minute uh mind and my body because i'm excited to do yeah that. i'm ready for so that. one of the ways that we as we you know shifted to an online studio was an, a want and a desire to share more um, free resources and tools mm -hmm. it, during the pandemic. And so we, we thought up of the mind body minute and sometimes it's breath work and sometimes it's movement and sometimes it's just meditation. All of them live on the Instagram TV channel for beyond bending yoga. And it's simply beyond bending yoga. You can find on Instagram or Facebook or beyond bending yoga.com for the website. Um, but they live on the Instagram for the Instagram TV. And so it's a free where it's a free resource and offering tools to people to realize yoga can be for anybody. You don't even have to roll out your mat. You can do it in the comfort of your own home and it can be free if that's where, where we need it to be. So on most Mondays, I put out a mind body minute, which has just a little bit of education and either through one of those main vehicles, breath work, meditation or movement. We take a pause in our day. Those who are willing to hop on and do it and just center and just ground. So today I thought we'd do one that, that would build, that would just help us find the here and the now. Mm -hmm. And it will bring in a little bit of the, the koshas. So understanding the layers of you, the body, the energy, the mind, the wisdom, and then that very center, peaceful place of you, the bliss body, which is always there. It's just, can we pull away the distractions to find it? So are we ready? I'm ready. I'm super okay. ready. <laughs> so whether you're here now or you're going to watch this later, I encourage you to do it. Just take a moment and say, I'm not just going to watch what this lady's doing. I'm going to actually participate. So find center, whether you're sitting on the ground or you, you've been sitting all day and you want to stand up. We can do this standing up. Or you can lay down flat on the ground. So I'm in a chair. So I just scooched myself to the edge of the chair so I can find a nice tall spine. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting down too. And then we're actually, if you feel comfortable, and everything in yoga and all the yoga classes I do is you got to feel comfortable. And there'll be layers of approach for you. So if you don't feel comfortable, simply just look down the tip of your nose. So you're lowering the vision, the field of vision that you have. We're taking in less information with our eyes. But if you're able, just close the eyes. And we might even take your hands and take them like this so that your fingers are in the front side of your body, thumbs are in the back, and you're just going to come right underneath, um, if you're a woman, where that bra strap area is. So a little higher. There you go, Wanda. I don't know if people can see on me. There we are. And then as your eyes are closed, breathe in and see if you can breathe so fully that you feel that place where your fingers are expanding out. And let's just do this for three breaths. And I'll give an inhale and an exhale to see that if you can lengthen out your breath as well. So if you'd like to breathe with me, let's inhale. And exhale. Two more times if that felt too fast or too slow. See if you can hop on board with it. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. With your exhale, set your hands in your lap. See if we can keep the eyes closed. And let's keep flowing with our breath. We felt the flow from our breath. Now we're going to lift the shoulders up as you breathe in. Settle them back and down as you breathe out. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, bring the shoulders up. Exhale, settle the shoulders down. Now, if it feels good, keep moving, wiggling, grounding. But if we're ready... Let's just pay attention to your physical body. Eyes closed. Outermost layer. There's nothing to do but just pay attention. As you pay attention, you might start to notice eyebrows can soften or jaw can soften. 
Can the tongue move to the base of the mouth? Can we still feel the flow of your breath? Just appreciate and notice physical body. And then let's notice your energy right now, or you might even reflect on how your energy has felt in the last day. Without any judgment, we're just paying attention, giving ourselves our own attention to notice where we're at. Notice any abundance or depletion. Imagine the flow of your breath could balance out any place that might feel like an over and abundance or a depletion of energy. And then bring your attention to your mind. Sometimes I even like, for the visual people, I even like to imagine my breath just in front of my nose. And so my eyes are still closed, but if you're visual, open them up to see just in front of your nose. And as you breathe and we imagine it coming up the nasal passages and just curating your mind, clearing it out, clearing cobwebs. And then if you really are visual, you might even put a color to that. Just choose a color, see what comes to mind. Clearing out the space of the mind. And then we follow that breath back out through the nostrils. So let's take three more breaths here, breathing in. Settling the mind as you breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. From our mind, let's move to our wisdom body or your intuition. Maybe where we make gut decisions or that place of knowing, we just know. And we just notice, how does it feel? No judgment. And it might even be a just nice time to breathe and pause and let our intuition, our wisdom, take a pause. And then one more visual, and I'll explain it as well if you like to keep the space of your eyes closed. Imagine this kid's toy. We have a nice little centered ball, and as we open it up, right, we find those outer layers. And as you exhale, imagine coming inward to that very core center, our bliss body. And you might even imagine a little flame at the very center. And as we inhale, we're aware of all those layers, wisdom, mind, energy, body. Exhale, we're coming back down to the quiet center. Let's be here for three more breaths. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale all the air out. Follow it all the way to the end. And then slowly start to blink the eyes open. Notice your surroundings around you. And before we rush to the next thing, notice how you feel now. And if there was one prominent area, what did you learn? Be a reflective learner. Did you notice work that might need to be done or paying attention in the body, in our energy, in our mind? in our wisdom, and take that to fuel your next time of self-care. What, what needs to be fueled in your self-care? I love this, Jennifer. Oh my gosh, I feel, I don't, I, I forgot that I was doing IG Live and I thought I was by myself. <laughs> it's good for me too, even leading, I get, you get a little nervous, you're gonna be in front of people, and even just leading it can help ground you back down. And I don't know how long it was because I wasn't watching my clock, but it's just, you know, just what, five minutes of a little meditation and it goes a long way. So if you liked it, please utilize the free Instagram TV Mind Body Minute with Beyond Bending Yoga. There's already about a dozen up there. It was really special. I mean, we're doing this, I, I, we were doing this together now on this mm -hmm. IG Live, people mm -hmm. watching, and I, mm -hmm. I, my mind cleared, mm -hmm. I relaxed, I feel like I, what was that like three minutes two minutes <laughs> no nope, i didn't even look <laughs> i had no idea how long yeah. it was and i feel rejuvenated i feel mm -hmm. re restored my mind just 
Oh, I love that, Jennifer. That's Wonderful. Really special. That mm -hmm. was, you can do that during the day. Like if you're stressed yeah. out or feeling frustrated mm -hmm. with something, you can take a minute or two, three minutes just to recharge, restore your, your yeah. mind and your body and then start over. Right. And this is yoga and this is self-care. And this is self-care mm -hmm. and this is yoga. I love it. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing this with us. Please, Crunchy Mamas, go to Jennifer's page. You will love it. This, do this for yourself because it's so yeah. important to take care of yourself. Either mm -hmm. if you don't understand a lot about Ayurveda, start with beginner's yoga. Start with yes. breathing exercises. It's so important for and us. And there's a... There's a meditation in almost every single class I do online. And there's little bits of Ayurveda and the kosha layered into every single class because I just can't help but offer and teach it because it's so essential. And for all those crunchy mamas who got the giving box or are contemplating it, not only are there classes I pick specifically for the crunchy mamas, mm -hmm. but there's a free trial on there. And right. that'll have a month of the online studio as a part of that. So please Take advantage of that. And if you're on the fence about it, that's a great deal. That's Sign up and find that box. Uh -huh. It's free. And her prices, her stu yoga studio is, mm -hmm. is fantastic. And mm -hmm. it's also reasonable. The, the, mm -hmm. class, the class prices are reasonable. They're doable. Mm -hmm. We can do it during the mm -hmm. pandemic, during anything. Mm -hmm. I know some studios are very expensive and it's hard to, mm -hmm. you know, engage and start mm -hmm. doing classes because then you don't know like with jobs and everything going mm -hmm. on right now but your what you do is amazing because you are accessible for yeah. mostly anybody to take your classes and i love it so mm -hmm. well thank you so much wanda <laughs> thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing everything with us your understanding and passion for yoga mm -hmm. and for everything mm -hmm. that you do and I just love this exercise. I'm going to rewind and watch this again. Because I'm going to do this again. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Namaste. Namaste. Bye.